Here we are, Milo, filming a tutorial. It's been a while. It has been a while. Today we're going to film the 2D brown hair. I have one behind me and I have one right here. Sorry, Milo. Um, so this is totally attainable project. I did it with my staff last week, which was a lot of fun. I would say relative to the chickadee, or not the chickadee, the wren or the rooster, that the 2D hair is maybe one you would want to do after those. It's just a little more open to interpretation in the, um, the rendering of the hair. Don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, in terms of supplies, I've kept this entirely needle felting. So we're going to use our felting needles. I have a pen tool. I have some single needles. I have my reverse needles. They are really fun to use in this project. And then the punch tool is handy for broader areas. I have a ruler just for making sure I'm on track with um, proportions and placement and scissors. And then some hand carters. You can card by hand if you don't have hand carters, uh, but I'll show how to use those as well. And I have um, a supply pack for this tutorial, the 2D hair supply pack. It's a lot of fun. We had a good time figuring out the colors and plentiful um, house dyed locks. So it's gonna be fun to, to dive in and show you guys how to make this project. Did I miss anything? I, I, don't, I don't think so, I think we're good. Yep, everything aside from the tools that you need is in the supply pack, including, sorry Milo, um, we made a, sometimes we make a, um, a little template. So it helps you get your drawing placement good and accurate. So, and we're also gonna be working on um, the Imprimatura pre-felt, which is gonna lend its, stability and color to the project right from the start. So I'll get started and show you guys everything that's in the supply pack and how we turn it into this piece of art. You ready, Milo? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna get my supply pack out and show you guys what is in there and then talk a little bit about composition and some of the choices that we're gonna make. So we're going to work on Sfumato um, Imprimatura, and it's about 14 by 18, approximately. These pieces are hand-shaped um, for this project, so there might be a little bit of variation. And then the way that the package is bundled, we have a, um, a light bundle, a medium bundle, a dark bundle, and then this is the hair hair bundle. Some of these colors get mixed in with each other in different places, but it's just a way to organize the supply pack and talk about the fibers with you as we begin to use them. And then your kit also includes the template, which I think is helpful to cut out. That's gonna show you uh, the placement and give you guidelines for drawing your hair. And then we have about an ounce and a half of, of locks that we dyed specifically for this project. You'll notice that some are lighter and um, there's some muted colors in there. There's some vibrant colors in there. And then some are more saturated, darker, and a little bit more um, maybe a little bit more muted overall. So we put a nice variety of two different dye lots into this kit and you'll see why. And then we also included some yarn to play with for, um, for your grass and just some different textures. And feel free to include anything that you might have on hand, other locks and yarns. I do try to create a color family between the rovings that we select and the locks that we dye, so that sort of no matter what choices you make, you're gonna have harmony in your, um, in your we're gonna call it a painting, <laughs> in your painting. Um, so 
first I'm going to cut out the template and we can chat while I do. I did put a couple of notes on here about um, placement and sort of color families that we're going to use just as reminders. And this doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close so that so that you can easily outline your hair. So Milo, you and I were talking about how many rabbit projects we've had. I was saying I don't have a whole lot to say as far as, you know, new material. No, there's no new material out there really. There's <laughs> Well, we did the 2D snowshoe hair, which is no longer a supply pack, but the tutorial it's still is out there. So a tutorial, there. right? Bunny puff 1 and 2. Yes. Basket bunny. Yes. The 3D snowshoe hair. Yes. 3D brown hair. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of hair. We've, we've been hairy. So. I feel like that was a trivia question. How many? How many rabbit tutorials we had. Rabbit related. Well, this is a Talbot nightmare, all this paper crinkling I'm doing. And, and bright white. And bright white. Should have cut it out beforehand. I do have one cut out I could have used. No, this is the full experience. Yes. I love these snips. They're so good for pretty much anything and everything. You don't really think scissors are a big deal until you try them and then <laughs> you're like, oh. Ones. You can see how this how this works and the placement. I, I put a note on the template to have two inches. You're going to have two further inches behind on the hair's back, and you're going to have about four additional inches in front of the hair. So let me get my, my fiber out. Oh, this is the color of the wall and the foam as well. <laughs> it's a good color. I want some space above, I'm going to call him a he, above his ears. And I definitely want more space in the direction that the subject is looking. I don't want his nose right up against the side. So we have plenty of space over here. And then I have about two inches behind the hair here. To start, I'm just going to make a few indents around the template so I know about where it falls before the next step. So stabbing with the needles, we get an idea of where this is in our canvas so that when I do the next step, on the back, I'm just continuing this line back. And our hair's legs get very ambiguous as we layer in foliage and stuff. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and I'm gonna open up my light bundle. It has a picnic, dune, this is mainly saved out for the hair. And I want to take, I'm going to steal a little bit of the edge of the sfumato. And this will be, um, this will be in your supply pack as well. I just didn't have it in my little sample here. I'm going to blend these three colors together to create a light, distant background. So I'll show the hand carters and I'll show doing it by hand. 
Using these hand carters, I'm going to need about two batches. So I load up the carter by alternating materials, and then I start with the carter um, kind of far end to far end, and I grab and scoop up, and then gradually I scoot in a little further and a little further until I've transferred all of the fiber from this carter to this carter. And then we switch, and I start end to end, and I go back. And I don't need this to be like super highly blended. It's meant to be an ambiguous distant background. So a little bit of variation in the color is just fine. So I'll show you how to do it with by hand in case you don't have carters. I like to take the fringy ends and pull and stack. And then, well, I only have a little bit of stomata left. But I stack them up end to end, I hold it between my hands, and I pull and restack, and pull and restack. Then it's not long before this does the same work that the carters do. If you're lucky enough to have a drum carter. If you're lucky enough to have a drum carter, you can run over. Although it's not that much material. No, you have so, to keep it in one little yeah, it's, uh, strip. I'll see how far I get with these two, we call these paint puddles when you've mixed some colors together. Now looking at my template, I know I want light here, light here, and light under, under his chin. We do have a reference picture, and the reference picture is, um, you find that on the listing, correct, mm -hmm. of the supply pack and it is downloadable. So I see the light under the hair. I'm going light in this area over his back and behind his ears and a little bit of light in the distance here. I'm gonna add some medium tones right off the hair's face, which is perfect because that will be a nice contrast to the light on his nose and muzzle. And I might put a little bit of medium mid tones in the background as well. So I'm just gonna talk you through my choices and what I'm doing <laughs> and why. And then I want this to be a little thin and a little messy. The nice thing about working on Sfumato, um, having this color already in here, is that I don't have to be very heavy with this, with this fiber. Um, a little bit of purple can show through and it doesn't matter because it's related. I like the way the dune and the picnic cancel each other out. I've got the warm, the warm tan and the cool green. At this point, I, I want my background fiber to slightly overlap where the hair will be because um, it'll get covered up and I want it to be, look um, like the hair is on top of this distant background. So I'm using the stab marks that I made just as a guideline so that I don't waste this fiber by putting it where it doesn't need to be. So you're not putting it on super thick, but also not Thin, thin. Like, yeah, uh, it's, I don't know how to describe that. It's kind of in the middle. I'm just gonna stab this down. We have a lot of stabbing to do. So if you need to mix more, mix more. You know, get your get your piece covered the way you want. We always recommend watching the tutorial and then doing because you're going to pick up um, you're going to pick up ideas and get a sense of the roadmap from watching. And then that you're going to make more informed decisions.
if you already have it sunk in as you wa like watching once and then go back to it. I'm going to take out my medium bundle now and it has similar colors, but just a little bit more saturated and a little bit darker. I have currant, um, cinnamon and moss, and I'm going to blend these together to make that mid tone. I want to start to blend with our, with our light tones. Also two, two batches. Mm, this might be just one, especially if I'm loading this up. We'll see. I'm going to go a, ever so slightly lighter on the cinnamon than the other two colors. So the colors that we picked in roving are going to coordinate really nicely with uh, the lock colors. That's good. If I want to create a mid-tone, another thing I can do is do that same thing. So let's say I want something kind of in between the light and the medium. but I'll put a little bit of picnic in there. And just a little bit of dune. So now I'm taking colors from both, both piles and mixing them together. Just gives you another, another paint puddle to pull from when you're trying to make your composition work and blending colors. It's also a little cooler because I didn't put the chestnut in it or the cinnamon in it. Okay, so right off of the hairs, the front of his face, I'm going to go a little bit darker in this area right here. So I'm putting this on relatively thin. And then I'm also going to shift to some darker tones down at the bottom here. So I'm, don't, don't totally cover up your light, leave your light there. And we're going to mix a dark as well. This one that I mixed that has a little bit of the background color in it, I might put up in this corner to give it a little bit of a vignette look, and then maybe just a little little bit back here to have some variation. So you're about two thirds of the way done there. <laughs> it's so funny. I showed my sister like a prototype for this. She's like, think that you know the bunny's neck is long his eyes too big um his ears are too long i said it's a hair <laughs> she goes oh that explains, <laughs> that explains it <laughs> funny all righty we have a lot of colors open now it might be helpful to leave them in their bundle in their bundles like if you're making a pile keep your light pile, keep your medium pile. Um, let's look at the dark pile. Ooh, that's a lot of fiber. Okay. This has some similar colors. This is, um, coffee 
which is very dark. And we, but we also have brown black Shetland, uh, similar color, but a different texture. And I would save this more for the hair, although you could use it in the foliage area as well. This is thyme and this is, is it chocolate? Chocolate. <laughs> I always get chocolate and bark mixed up. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a dark blend for my foreground. I don't wanna to do too, too much in the foreground because we wanna work on the hair and then the, build the foreground on top of the hair. But I'm gonna make a, a darker blend using the um, chocolate. I don't need too much of this. I only need, definitely only need um, one or, you know, one hand carter and then like just one or two um, if you do it blending by hand. So I'm using chocolate, thyme, and I'm gonna put a little bit of the moss and currant in it. So now we're taking the mid-tone and just turning it a corner um, to a darker, a darker level. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit Let's put a little bit of dark in, of um, coffee in there. So chocolate, thyme, moss, currant, and coffee. So dark is even darker than coffee. Dark is practically black. I think they just don't call it. Call it black. Oh, this is really pretty. That time makes everything pretty. It is. This is a great shadow color, just, um, you know, balance between cool and warm. And um, I love putting purple and, and teal in my shadows. So put this down in the corner, down in this corner, and just at the bottom here. As you work, be aware, like try not to, same with, especially once we get into the locks, try not to make straight lines of things. Like I realize this is kind of a line and this is kind of a line, but interrupt them so that you don't want your composition to be um, boring. We need it to be a little bit irregular. I'm working on a two inch foam insulation board. They're available at the hardware store and um, they hold up really well. They last a really long time and it works great for larger 2D pieces. All right, now we have a little bit of our layout, see how our composition is and I'm going to draw the hair in. So to draw the hair, I'm going to take my template, put it down, and then I like to use current. I don't know why. It just stands, stands out well. I'd like to take a really thin strip and just twist it in my hands. And then you're just going to draw. This line will get covered <laughs> kind of eventually. Um, it stands out, but then it disappears. It does. It stands out so that you can get oriented and do your project, but then it'll disappear.
This template is such a time saver and I, it's hard to get a hare's face right. They kind of wacky faces. Definitely struggled with it. Um, and every time I make it, it looks a little bit different. Now, stabbing around the template is going to automatically give you a slightly smoothed out version of the drawing. It's going to be your job when we go into refining mode to tweak your smoothed out version into um, kind of back into having some of the nooks and crannies and details that get taken away by this, by this step. You don't have to get every single line. Um, you know, as long as you know where things are, that's what works for you, that's what matters. I think everyone on the staff really appreciated the template. Yeah, it was fun seeing. They looked like seeing everyone succeed with it. They looked like hairs, mm -hmm. I think, because of the template. <laughs> so this this area is an example where this is going to be a kind of sort of dumbed down, for lack of a better word, version of what's actually happen, happening here. So when I take this off, this just looks like a, a curve, but I will, at least I know that the, um, the, the size is right and the placement is right, and then I can go back and get everything as defined as I want it. So I can take a look at the drawing and get a few more lines in for example, let me put this in a place that we can see it. Okay. Maybe I'll put uh, the back of this ear line in. We also want our reference image handy. So I don't, I looked, I don't know that it can actually, it can be saved. It can also be a screenshot. Oh, oh, okay. I don't think okay. the images can be. I gotcha. Not really downloaded. Downloaded. I'm just indicating where the jawline is. Now, another thing that we did that we found super useful because we were um, struggling with it a little bit is cut the eyeball out. So, um, not, I didn't do the whole almond. I just cut out the circle of the actual eyeball because I tended to make the eye too big every time I made it and this helped a lot. And it and because the drawing is pretty accurate, um, as accurate as my brain could make the drawing, um, then the placement will be pretty accurate. So I put this back down. And then using, um, I'm going to use the black core, which is in the hair bundle. The hair bundle has Serafina white, Manx, black core, and Gen Gen tan. Manx is the long, strandy, um, natural fiber. Gen Gen tan is a blend, and it'll be shorter and fuzzier. But I'm going to take some of the black and just stab it into this eye area. I'm not worried about a perfect circle right now, and I don't need a lot, just a little bit to show me where that circle is. All right, so now we have our drawing. We have uh, a little bit of a background composition laid in 
And now we get to play with locks, which is the fun part. All right, as I mentioned, when we started, your locks have this um, lighter palette and a deeper palette. To start, we wanna use the lighter palette in the background. And there's a couple of techniques that I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show how to fuzz them out, and I'm also gonna show glazing. <laughs> it's like, um, it's a painting term, but we're gonna do it with fiber. So these will end up more in the foreground, so we're gonna set those aside. And when I look through my lighter locks, I wanna pick out the most muted, the most muted ones. So I've got this like dusty pink color. I have some fairly light greens, those will work. Um, if it's saturated, if it's really saturated like this, uh, blue green is a little bit too saturated for the background. So anything in the gold, pink, light green, and light purple category is great. So I'm just gonna look for those and pull those out. That one's getting a little bit darker, but still can work. Oh, those are pretty. Like this pile sort of has it all. This is great. All right, these I'm gonna set aside. They're light, but they're a little bit more saturated. Behind the hair, I want it to look distant. So whatever lock I use, I'm gonna take away a lot of the detail and structure by fuzzing it out. That also, and yeah, I don't want strong verticals or strong horizontal lines. I just want it to look blurry, um, but natural. Those are so nice. Yeah, they're so fun. It's, it's the fun part. The more um, to create distance um, in paintings in general, the farther away the object is, the more atmosphere is between you and the object, and the more our eyes are working to see. So um, blurry and more atmospheric is what creates distance. If I were putting bold colors here, they would want to pop forward and it would dominate dominate the painting. Um, I'm going to put this pink over here because it is a little bit bolder. So let the locks do the work, the randomness. So here's a good, I'll show you a good spot to glaze. Um, right here, I have a relatively vivid um, yellow. If I want to tone that down, I'm going to take this grayed out green and thinly put it over. Now, that yellow is still there. It's still going to pop through, but that locky glaze um, just dims it down a little bit. And it's okay if our background overlaps our hair lines a little bit. It'll look more realistic if you build the hair on top of that rather than trying to end all of these, you know, right up against the line. Let them flow into the line. And I want to look for a medium value lock to put 
onto the sides here. But medium value, light to dark, but not too bright. A purple would be really good. This one is really pretty. It goes from light green to purple to pink. So our brown hairs really just in England? There's the European brown hair. Um, I, I think, I mean, I don't know if America's version is the jackrabbit. The jackrabbit. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Oh, this is a bunch of pretty color. A hair less than one year old is called a leveret. What? I've uh, never heard I, that me word. Me either. And we've talked about a lot of hairs, like we said. <laughs> leveret. Do you know what a group of hairs is called? Warren? Or is that rabbits? Uh, no, it says a husk, a down, or a drove. Wow. not going to forget about this spot right here, which I do want to keep relatively light. As if sunlight is right behind the hair. But I can put a slightly more saturated colors down here. So I've got this chartreuse green color. Maybe a light pink would be fun. In a short sprint, they can run up to 50 miles an hour. Jeez, <laughs> that's fast. I don't think a horse can go that fast. Longer distance, it says 35 miles an hour which is still fast. Now, as I move this way, I'm going to get into these, which I pulled had pulled out because they were a little more vibrant. So you're pretty much spreading them all out. Right now I'm spreading the them all end. out yeah. because we're going to put more detail on top and we want that to pop. So I'm really thinning these out just to be more of a coloring, a random coloring. And because of the way these locks are dyed, they have a lot of color variation from end to tip. So that's automatically giving us some fun, um, fun color changes without too much work. I'll put some back there. You go sort of near the top, not up to I'm the top. I'm not top. covering the top top. I want that to seem even farther away so those finer fibers do a better job of that. Um, okay, let me see where I am here. Ooh, got, got a lot of pretty colors. And then as you go through, you're going to find like a lock that you're like, oh, I want to use that somewhere. <laughs> you can save out the really good ones. But I am going to go ahead and get this purple in this mid-tone area here. 
because I like that. So far, I have not gone into the darker locks. I'm just working with um, the more vivid bunch. That's the one right there. That one was too bright? Yeah, it was a little too vibrant. I can always go back and keep playing and adding, which I'm surely will do, but I do feel like I have it kind of colored the way that I want it for now. And then the next step is going to be to start blocking in the hair. Okay, now we're going to get into our hair. We're going to build the hair on top of what's going on here. And then we can add more locks in the foreground. So to start, I'd like to make a few values just like we did the background. We're gonna start with a dark value and we're gonna make a medium value and we're gonna make a light value. And these will be our hair paint puddles. In the darks pile, we have thyme, um, chocolate, coffee, and brown black and then in the hair pile we have the black core the gen gen tan manx and serafina white and then we also have cinnamon and marigold which we can incorporate um, and honestly i would mix in greens and purples as well but we're going to keep it um keep it a little more straightforward with these natural brown colors. So to make the dark, let's take our brown black Shetland and our chocolate. And I do want, I do want to put, I do want to add a little bit of a different color. Let's put a little bit of time. I could go with time or current, but just something that's not brown. And then a little bit of coffee. So I did, um, actually, I just did these four. That's what I did, the darks. doesn't take a lot of fiber, so I'm just gonna do one um, pass of each blend. So there's our dark. And then I wanna make a medium brown, so I'm gonna use chocolate. Cinnamon. Manx and I'm going to throw a little bit of current in there just to be weird. There's infinite ways to do this. <laughs> infinite, absolutely. And you and then all of these paint puddles you can further tweak which we'll get into as we get into the details of the hair but these are just it's just a way to start broad strokes light medium and dark to start to give as much as we can some 3d shape to what is actually flat so you do usually three passes 
I didn't count. Is that what it was? Well, that's, I think, <laughs> what I've been counting. Now we want a lighter brown, um, and I'll use cinnamon, a little bit of Manx, and some Gen Gen Tinner. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and mix a light, like a light, a light. So I have a dark, I have a darker, a, you know, a darker brown. I have this medium brown. And if I wanted to saturate this, I could take a little bit of it and put some marigold in it. Um, but I'll wait to do that until the end. So to make a li nice light color, I'm going to use... Dune. I'm not going to use all of it. I'm going to save some of this just in case I come across another place I need to use it. Um, some Gen Gen Tan and some Serafino White. So this is going to give us a really nice light color that we'll use in the hair, around the eye, on the backs of the ears, all those spots that we see that are nice and light. This one I'm blending a little bit more yeah. because I want it to get pretty solid. Dark, medium dark, medium and light. a lot of fiber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to refer to my reference image as I go here. And the first thing I want to do, whether I'm painting with oils or with fiber art, is I like to work uh, dark to light. So I'm going to take my dark and put that in the places that I know are the deepest, like where his legs blend into the foreground here. We're just, we're not going to make this very detailed. We're, we want that to kind of disappear. I want to put it definitely in this triangle space between the jaw and the, I guess that's his little clavicle. And this does not have to be perfect because lights are going to go over it. Um, I'm going to hit the top of the back almost as if um, like if his, if the sunlight's coming this way that his ears are casting a shadow on his back. And I'm going to put some under, I think actually when we did it, we might have just used black. The brown black? I think we oh. just used black just to get to get these um, these real dark spots. I feel like that's what we did. So I'm gonna do that because it's a little bit easier to control. I can get this spot right under the, where the cheekbone is casting shadow on the neck. And then these, um, this is fine on the back. I don't need black there, but in these tight little spots, I think this works better. And same with in the ears. Uh, this is going to be a lot easier to control in that space. And it is very black. It is um, definitely the most true black in the picture. This little line is important right here. Now this I can start to crisp up and make definitive.
definitely has this dark line at the back of the front ear. Take some little pieces and just get these dark spots um, and behind the eye. These are also indicated on your template um, if you can find a way to overlay your template and see. <laughs> So like I, I did indicate, oops, where are we here? There we go. I did indicate these lines. So you can just check that you've got them about in the right space. So this one needs to go like that. I'm gonna put a dark line, the eyebrow, top of the head here. working right over those lock ends so that we cut those off. This area isn't black black, but a dark line is gonna help me see where I need to go. On the nose, it's a little tricky um, you've got to make sure that you keep that triangle very, very small, but we'll get to that detail in a bit. And then same with this weird little area under the mouth here. Laying this dark in is going to help kind of pop these hairs off when we get to that, that spot. Right now we're basically painting everything that is deeper, <laughs> deeper down in the hair. Now, just like we use dark, I can also use some light to start to see where those, um, those places are. So I'm going to pull some little mixes of my light. And when I look at the image and squint my eyes, I see a line of light that's going um, about 45 degrees. It's going to about like 10 o'clock, 1030 um, from the muzzle up around the eye and then up, up the ear, um, up the ear right here. So I'm going to put some light in a few places to start to mimic that. The squinting of the eyes definitely helps. Yeah, squinting of the eyes definitely helps. I'm going to put a little light on the top of his nose just so I know where that line is and I can revisit with my template to help me with that. I think it would help to draw the almond shape around the eye right now, just so that you remember that this is just the eyeball. <laughs> so let's do that with just a little piece of black. I'm going to twist out about an inch and a half of 
of black. I'm going to pinch out just about an inch and a half, a little twist of black so I can draw the almond around the eye. Now it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's deceptive. It might look like, there you go. thank you. You might think it's an almond like this. Um, but think more of, think of it more as a square that you're just going to extend that corner and you're going to extend that corner. And that's going to give you a better, a better eye shape. So I'm going straight across the top, um, horizontally and coming down very close to the eyeball. So it's like a square that you're kind of just pulling each corner out just a little bit. And then I'm going straight across horizontally under the eye and then rounding up to this corner. Okay, back to our lights. This light, I'm going to wait because I want to put that in as kind of as fluff, but I can do this light. And the back of the ear here is actually a very thin light line, so we're going to put that in. And then let's go back to our darker um, medium brown and lay some of that in on his back. I'm going to use broad, broad strokes right now. I'm covering a lot of ground. I'm not getting too detailed about it. We're going to add some more um, pretty colors on top, but I just want to get, just want to get it covered. I see this also um, at the back of the ear right here, on the back of the head here. I think this is also the color that's at the front edge of the ear. Now, sometimes on this project, it is helpful to take some of your fiber and either break or cut it down because it's just too much to try and control um, it's too long to try to control in small places. So breaking it down and fuzzing it out lets us um, control where it goes better. So I'm going to put it along this front edge of the ear here. So I'm working with the darker of the browns that we made. Not the dark, dark. Not the dark, dark. Um, where's the dark, dark? This is the dark, dark. We made four piles. I'm working with pile number two. This one.
I'm going to put it all along the back jaw right here. This, this is kind of like our main rabbit color. <laughs> um, I like having the purple in there. It, it grays it out a little bit. So I'm going to take another stack and cut it down so I have more small fiber to work with and just kind of dance it around the the picture wherever I see wherever I see this value you can even hold it up to your if you're able to print out your ref, a reference image um, so definitely along the, the neck here I'm gonna put it here And values really, yeah, they stand alone and they are their own thing, but in your painting, it's about what's next to each other. So I can make this look a lot darker by putting a light next to it, and I can make it put, look lighter by putting a dark next to it. So that, um, something to keep in mind and takes a little practice, but I'm gonna put this on the nose here. I found that concept very difficult in um, the cloud paintings. Still working with my medium brown, putting that here and there where I see see that value. I gotta cut this a little smaller. Put it up against the back of the ear, the back of the front ear. So the the fringe is your friend. Like wherever you have a fringy edge, that'll be a, a good blender. And I'm gonna go ahead and down the neck here, but I am gonna lighten this up further, but this will be underneath it. Probably same with this cheek area. I'll go ahead and put this color on it, but I could see brightening it up a little bit. back is just up a little bit higher so you're keeping that line not straight also yeah it's it's definitely not straight across it kind of lifts a little bit give it a little bit more interest I need to go dark back into this area with some dark. I'm gonna cut this down. This is the darkest of the rabbit blends that we made.
Now, we made a mix for the back. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to make a mix that has the dark, it has this gray kind of very um, rustic, like in, in other words, relative to this, what's going on here has a lot more variation, but we want to keep it random without being too like laborious about it. So I feel like the Manx is going to work really well and the brown black Shetland, they're a similar, um, they're a similar fiber type and uh, they have the right, the right colors. So these two, and then let's just put a little bit of chocolate in there for, for the brown, brownness of it. So this is a, a different pile than what we've made because I'm going for this big range, this salt and pepper look. I'm gonna put some of the Manx and some of the brown black Shetland. And I'm not gonna over blend these. I wanna keep it relatively unblended. And then I definitely wanna cut this to get a little bit more of that um, sticking off kind of hair like look really random. So let's just exper experiment with this. You can keep this up on the back. I'm gonna put more more browns down here, but I kind of just like like let it splay open. I'm gonna felt it down like that. So that gives another layer of texture to the back. And then we don't wanna focus on this. We want the viewer to focus on this. So kind of the less detail we have, the better. Give this a lift. Been stabbing a lot. Okay. Okay, so we have our lighter brown that we made, and let's see where this wants to go. I'm gonna cut it to get it a little smaller. Definitely right here, I see it. And on the cheek, I see it. Just small amounts of fiber. There's infinite like amount of tweaking that we can go, well, not totally infinite, but there's a lot that we can go back and evolve and we are going to do that. Um, I'm gonna take some of this mix. Remember I talked about punching it up with marigold. So we take a little bit of this mix and just saturate it with one swipe of marigold. Cause I do see a very saturated chestnut in a few places. That mix was your third brown. This was the, the yes, the lighter. The lighter of the browns. Of the middle browns. So for example, if I see this in the chest here, and I see it 
should probably cut some more of it open on the muzzle. It's back here, but it's a little darker. So I'm gonna take a piece of it and mix it with some chocolate. You'll see as well, and I will demonstrate, some of the locks can work in the hair and create a lot of fun um, and easy um, variation. So for this like chestnut, saturated darker chestnut color that's resting in the back of the neck right here, I might look for that in lock form and you can um, cut it open and blend it in. Sometimes, sometimes it exists. Let's see, let's just take the tip of this one, like a little bit more brown would be good, but like that, that's what I'm looking for. So those kinds of blends and small color changes, you can definitely make um, as you move around your hair and you are going to do that after we get some more locks on here. But now we can see where the hair is. Um, we can see, you know, see the, start to see the lights and darks. And we're just working with very small amounts of fiber and sort of paint by number at this point. Look at the picture, fill it in. Look at the picture, fill it in. people are having fun watching you work because it's really neat to watch it watch it evolve, evolve. yeah I hope so because sometimes I don't have a ton to say about something okay I'm going to move my hair paint puddles over and get a little more light and uh, a little more perspective. It's a great idea to take a picture. Um, your your phone camera camera will flatten it out and um, show you. I don't have to turn it around. Um, just I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but it'll show you what's what, and you can. You can look at it from a new perspective and it, it kind of like by making it smaller, it gives you more clarity when you look at the image over overall. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with where I am. Like I knew when I put that in that it was going to stand out a little bit um, and that's okay. But I, I do really see that when I look at my picture, I feel like my hair is looking 
um, like it's in the right place and everything looks, looks good for where we are in the process. So now, um, we're going to spend some time getting, um, having a little bit more fun with locks. I see, I want to change this here, um, to make more, this is kind of all blending in together. So to make more contrast, I'm going to look for a lock that's a light green, um, because that is a great contrast to the warm browns that are going on on top of the, on top of the hair's nose. And the flatter we can get this area, um, the more the hair and the foreground are going to come forward. I'm not sure where the black came from. Yeah, so now I get to pick which locks I want where. Gosh, these are insane. They go from like a mossy green to a... Um, pretty vibrant, almost like peacock blue. When we worked together, you had us do the lower left corner in very dark. Yes. Locks. Yes. I'm going to get my mid ground set. I'm going to make sure this is how I want it. Um, and then we're going to build some of these locks on the bottom. And that's last because it's that's last closest. because it's the mostest the most is forward <laughs> that did just come out of my mouth I like okay so I have a real high contrast right here between the bright green and this deeper purple that's a lot of color so this is a fun glaze or mute this is going to mute everything out this will tone down the purple and unite the purple and that bright green. So I'm kind of thinking of this as like a little patch of something, but in the distance. And I feel like this is sort of the way I want it. Let me look at my picture. The picture is great for figuring out what you want. This is maybe a bit of too strong of a line, so I'm going to interrupt that line a little bit. With what is the question? Oh, I just found a bunch of muted locks. So it's important to step away, yes, come back, definitely step take a little away. lunch break. <laughs> and then I might want something like right in here. So I still kind of have a strong, strong shape here. So something right in here to break, break this up a bit. So something a little darker than this, but not quite as dark as that. I'm thinking this lock will do the trick. Or this one. This is pretty. 
This is really pretty. I'm going to divvy this up so that I have a little bit of it over here and a little bit over, of it over here. Okay, now we're gonna look in our locks and we're gonna pick out the darkest ones out of these deeper, more saturated colors. This part is fun. <laughs> oh, like that's a really nice dark teal. And we wanna put those in the corners and at the bottom. Oh, that's a really good good texture. Having some dark come over the light is great because that's telling you that this is in front of that. Um, this is in the distance and this is maybe in shadow but in the foreground. So before I stick these down I'm just going to kind of take a look at what I have and see if I need to move them around. Um, a nice dark green, that's good. dark brown. Oh, this is one I'm going to save out, maybe put it in my rabbit somewhere. This purple isn't, it's dark on the tips, but not on the bottom. So I might use that maybe in here or here or both. This is a really nice dark green. I'm going to go on the lower left with that one. So we want this to start to look as if it's in front of the hair and with more detail and more pop, that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, more dark teal. Oh wow, that is really pretty. Yeah, at this point, if you see locks that you really like, um, you can save them out for the top. Um, I'm usually trying to do tips up, it just works better. And they don't have to all be in a line. You can, you can let them be bunchy or, um, if it's a lighter lock and it's kind of in a circle, it can mimic a little bit of a uh, bit, little bit of sunlight. Some mid tones here. pretty vibrant green. I'm going to save that one for the top, I think, when I know I'm at the top. So do, do hairs live I think hares are more solitary than yes, rabbits. Yes, and they don't actually make a burrow. Oh, where do they sleep? Just, uh, they That's make really a nest. They make a nest. Where? Just kind of. Where? Where, Milo? Where? where? <laughs> if I knew, I would find them. 
Um, in in farmlands, not near foxes. <laughs> that's what it says. In farmlands. That's what it says. Open farmland. Okay. Grassland habitats and woodland edges. And just kind of a little nest, just like you are building right there. Mm -hmm. Tall grasses. Once we're muted. They live to be three or four years old. Oh, that's not very old. Mm -mm. I'm going to show like a, I just like this purple so I'm taking a bit of it and I'm going to do a little glaze on the cheek this part of the cheek that's not in light sometimes it's good to take your um, background colors and put them in your subject because they do reflect um, they do reflect what's around them so same with this Green. I'm going to find a dark spot of it and cut a little piece and then open it up and put it again. There's a little bit of a shadow under here where the light's not hitting. I'm just going to put it in a few places. So if I really open it up, it doesn't, um, it doesn't look like you, you that color, like you've just stuck that color there. It just kind of changes the tone of what's of what's underneath it. I called it a nest. They're calling it a form. A form. Interesting. Basically, a shallow depression in the ground that they scrape out. Huh. But they don't make a whole burrow like a regular rabbit. Here's a nice warm um, pinkish brown we can put on the rabbit. It'll kind of talk to these warm brown colors that are back here. Yeah, you're gonna end up with lots of little pieces of fiber everywhere every hair every hair I don't remember talking about this why do hairs fight the boxing why do they fight what's the boxing about it says it usually occurs when a male is being too persistent with a female chasing her across fields in an attempt to mate when she's had enough she'll turn around and try to fend him off in a fierce boxing match hmm. this behavior can go on for weeks oh gosh <laughs> okay i'm getting a little i'm being being not instructive and a little too random okay so i'm happy with this um i feel like this needs sort of a combining brown in it because there's a lot of color jumps and then the face is going to be um sort of evolution um, but before I do that, I'm going to have a little more fun with locks and talk a little bit more about what I'm putting where, and we can get our yarn out and start getting some of this. And make sure you cut your yarn in like different lengths. <laughs> you don't want all the same lengths. And you can also, Talbot discovered, take a piece and either un um unspin all of it by like sort of teasing it out it makes a really fun texture or just the top of it so that you have 
some variation in the top of the um, of the stalk, or you can leave it like a blade of grass, nice and straight. And then same with these, um, you have a little bit of thick and thin with these uh, this house dyed yarn. So make sure your thin is at the top for realism. Well, just to look just to look natural. And again, watch your height. You don't want everything, you know, all at the same height. And for now, I'm going to tack these down just at the bottom. And I will put other locks on top of them to help hold them and to blend them in. I'm going to keep this dark over here as if it's a, a little shadowy corner. know what male and female hairs are called? Are they bucks and does? They are bucks and does. It sounds like a rap song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's do this little poof right here. We've got this kind of the way I want it. It's dark, it's just dark. And then I, I had a blendy brown come out. Uh, so I'm gonna, for this one, I'm gonna use the Manx and some Serafina, uh, no, actually Manx and Dune, nice and long. So just get us a nice long tan color, just a small amount of those two things. And I can cut this in half because that is a lot of fiber. But I do want to keep it aligned this time because I'm going to put it in place along this edge, stab it firmly, and then fold it over. So I'm going to make sure I'm stabbing right along this brown area here. And that's going to make this tuft of ear hair <laughs> that, that he has. Now, it's a little long, so I'm going to cut it. This is a great mix to throw in somewhere else. just keep looking at the reference picture. I keep looking at the reference picture, looking for color changes. Um, you know, a helpful little tool is, and I think you're actually sitting near it. It might be tucked. Where did I see it? Oh no, it's at my house. <laughs> uh, that means I'm not close to it. <laughs> All right, but let's do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to take this template and I'm just going to fold it. We have a nice broad spot kind of where I drew these eyes and I'm going to cut out a square. It's going to end up about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Okay. You can look at an area. I mean, this isn't to scale, but I can look at an area. I can isolate it and see what's happening. I can clearly see dark, light, light, and then I can put it on here and 
see if the same things are happening. So it works a lot better when you have a picture um, printed to scale. So if you are using an image on your laptop, sometimes I zoom until it is the size of what I'm working on. And that's a great way to check um, all kinds of things. You can, you can do this, you can take your, um, you can take your ruler and check, you know, check your measurements, li like literally measure and make sure they're the same. Even without something that is at the same scale, you can still do that by doing things relative to each other. So from the nose to the back of the head is two and a half inches. And then I can say, well, what else, what else is two and a half inches? Um, the tip of the ear to this dark line behind the eye is two and a half inches. And so then you can check on here, the nose to the back of the head is five inches, which means this is double that size. And then check on here and the tip of the ear to this dark line is five inches, stuff like that. Um, the size of the eye, the depth of the head, you can, you can just keep, um, keep checking things. That was a pretty bold move. That worked out for you though. What? Checking the measurements. Oh, <laughs> Hey, my picture looks really good in the overhead. It looks way better in the overhead than what <laughs> I'm seeing when I look at it. I keep adding things and then be like, oh, geez, I don't, I don't know if that was a good idea. Um, okay, so a little bit more fun with the locks. You don't have to go bright and bold. Oh, I like that color. I'm going to put that in the rabbit somewhere. Um, I've got, I'm just off camera slightly with the pile that I have in front of me here. This is a really vivid green sort of bunch that's all together. So, you know, I, I don't think I want to do that in this picture, but that is, that is a lot of fun. Um, let's see what else we have over here. Oh, I don't dig in, you know, I'm always digging teal. That's because it's one of the best colors. It is a great color. Gosh, everything can change when you put, you know, put one of these locks on here. All right. I'm going to show how I'm going to address the eye. I'm going to show using the reverse needle and I'm going to show a few more detailed areas and color blends, uh, but I really could go on a long time with tiny tweaks that, that you will, you know, I'm, I'm trusting that you will, you will see and you will discover yourself. I think when we, when I taught this, when we did this together as a group, here at work, there were long periods of time where like maybe I did a demo and then everybody just, just worked. So, okay. One area that I don't have quite right is under the chin and maybe this back of the ear. I want to create, it's like probably almost white, but it's in shadow. So I want to create a muted muted color and this Gen Gen Tan. I don't have, I want to remember to put some Sfumato in the kit. Oh yeah, give me, I'll pull some off of there. This is a really pretty color lock I want to put somewhere. Thank you. So Gen Gen Tan and um, yeah, Sfumato should do it. These two colors will kind of cancel each other out in terms of hue and make a grayed out. It, but it's like white, but it's not white because it's, it's in a shadowy area and they're probably not quite white anyway. And then let me cut it down. I could put a little bit of dune into it, but I think, I think it's good as is. 
So that's going to go on the back of the ear here. We have this cool gray that is on the on the rear ear, um, but facing us and letting those fringy edges blend into the black is going to do the trick for making that blend. And then this color is also under the chin here. And probably even a little bit darker than that. So if I squint my eyes and look at the reference image, this value on the chin is darker than what's behind it, um, this lit up grass. So I might even try to find an even more lit up lock uh, to put there. I'm gonna get some of my medium brown. So at this point, I really would advise and encourage you to use small amounts of fiber, making very small color changes. Don't, uh, you know, no more big sweeping um, high contrast, you know, large amounts of fiber. Just very little, very little fiber and very small color changes. This lighter chestnut right here on the cheek is going to make this cheek come pop forward. I want to preserve this dark that's behind it. So I'm going to go, you know, sort of square inch by square inch over my image and, and be like, well, what does this need? Like right here, where the ear comes down the back, there it's there's a nice decent shadow there that I lost. So I'm either gonna uncover it. Uncovering it is probably the better thing to do than going over it. There's some chestnut right in here that I don't have yet. So I'm gonna see if I can find a little bit of that saturated medium brown color, the one that we added the marigold to. And just see, it's just such a small, such a small amount of fiber. I like this color. This area under the eye is, even though it's light, it's not as white as everything else that's going around the eye. So I'm putting this little lock color there. I like the color of this lock, so I'm just looking to see where else I can use it. I feel like it could go right along here as well. All right, let's do the eye and then I'm going to show the reverse needle. So the, the best thing to do is to put the iris and then go back and put the pupil back into the center. It's too hard 
to make the iris, you know, into a wheel shape. Like we got to make the iris into a circle and then put the, um, the pupil back in. So I'm going to cut up some marigold, which is pretty much the color. Do you remember what else we put in it? You had a lock. Oh, I was... had a lock color. I don't have that saturated lock this time. I don't feel like. This could work. It's kind of like amber color. It's not really brown, it's not really green. And then maybe a little bit of this. Make it a little ready. more interesting. Yeah, just to make it a little more interesting than, I mean, it's subtle, it's, it's a small space, but. I don't know. I just want people to feel, I just want you guys to feel like you can be creative <laughs> and, and, um, it's like, uh, using paint right out of the tube. Like there's so many more options than that. So I'm going to take some of this jumble And it's hard to estimate the amount left. That's, that's a nice jumble. You like that? That red and green bouncing off of each other in there is nice. I'm going to roll it in my hands to start to bring it into a round shape. That's just helpful because your hands can do some of the work. And then, oh, it's still too much, gosh. And then I'm going to try and stab it right into this black circle. Now I'm gonna have to reestablish the black circle around it, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so with a really thin piece of black, um, now is when a good time for a single needle. And then with a little piece of black, I'm going to make the center now the nice thing about mixing a little bit of color in with your marigold is that if you want to create a highlight down here, you can. So I could do, I'm going to deviate from the picture a tiny bit this time, and I'm going to put the white dot up here, tiny bit of Serafina white. Now, if the highlight is up there, that means that the reflection in the glassy eye is going to be down here. So I'm going to take pure marigold and go opposite the white highlight with this nice brighter pure color and that should make that glassy eye look. Probably if I go a little browner up here, it will help.
this white of the eye back here, I have this a little large. Is that same mix that we made with the sfumato and the tan. It's not really white. You don't want it to be white. That would look too glaring. But hairs do look a little crazy because you can see the whites of their eyes. Okay, I'll probably do a little more to get this really refined when I can lean my head in there. <laughs> hmm, let me just go a little further with a few things. I want to make this line pretty definitive. So with some Serafina white and Dune, that's going to give me a really nice light color and I'm going to use this in a couple of places. Like it's almost white, but it just has a little glow from that dune. I'm gonna put it here for sure. I'm gonna put it here and I might even do a little fold over like we did here just to get this top line of the muzzle really distinct but to let the fringe blend so I'm going to stab the center let me see, make sure I'm in the right spot here and then fold it over so that's going to give me a distinct line and then fringe to blend. Okay, and then I also want to put it right here, brighten this up. This is going to make this pop off of this. I'm paying attention to this straight line and then it turning versus just um, making a perfectly straight line. All right, those are the places that I see pop. Oh, and maybe just right here. So by putting that there, it created, oh, it looks darker now, even though it's not really. And I want to get just a little lighter right here. So small amounts of fiber, very subtle, very subtle color changes and just looking around and constantly you know refining choices this is a lot of dark i feel like i need to get a nice light spot in there so i'm going to use my blend my um, third like my lighter medium brown blend and break up some of this dark a little bit. Give him a little more shoulder bleed. Okay, 
So we've done a lot of stabbing. We have a lot of layers of color. Now this is where the reverse needle comes in to help us like blend and soften all of this stuff that we've <laughs> put down here. I'm gonna lift this off of the foam and I'm gonna use the reverse needle at an angle, almost like I'm pulling fur. So in the cheek here, for example, by pulling the sfumato out, it's gonna gray, gray this out a little bit. It's gonna blend the, all the different tones together. Now I have a choice. I can either smooth that down and felt it, or I can kind of trim it and leave it, leave it hair-like, so to speak. I do see a spot right here where I have very little color, so I'm gonna, gonna address that. A little chestnut in here. Like I said, this, this picture is a little tough. There's a, there's a lot of color changes going on. A lot of colors in this hair. This area is another place that the reverse needle can make a big difference. And here. I want to get a nice bright bridge to the nose. So I'm going to use a little bit of marigold, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of dune and break them up and just get this very distinctive bridge on the nose. Now, when we made this as a group, I think I probably did very different things, you know? So it's just, um, there's tons of options. Let me get a little more dune, it's a little vivid. With these colors, they can pretty much make whatever they want. Uh, with the different options, they can... You can blend much, away yeah, and, any. you know, the, the pitfalls are going to be over over smoothing out lines. So like, for example, in the ears, this is very blunt. That's a very blunt, blunt line. Or um, in the muzzle, getting, um, getting the details of what's happening here. And then losing contrast. So we put in darks, but then just covering them all up. Uh, so making sure you maintain some contrast, but in terms of colors, um, I think with the palette that we have, it should be, should be pretty easy to stay on track. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the muzzle. I'm going to put this over the bridge of the nose, stab it down where I feel the line should be. Hopefully, let me get this straight here. And then fold it over. So that makes a distinct line. And then fringy edge to blend.
one thing we were finding was just making sure that this little black part of the nose stays small enough and that this colored chestnutty part comes down quite low. Um, in other words, don't make this a big black triangle. It's just a tiny little, tiny little crescent. What were you going to say? Um, not explaining what I mean about color. So just with a few bits of fiber, they could really make, uh, even taking one of the blends that you originally made and then adding mm -hmm. a little bit of light or dark to it to get mm -hmm. a, a variation in shade, they can make almost any yes. uh, lightness or darkness of the colors. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, lots and lots that can be done. I found this dark brown lock and this is a great opportunity to <laughs> use this this color and this texture in a place that maybe maybe I lost some contrast or I see I see some contrast that I want to establish so I think it would be great right here and maybe in this little weird tuft of hair that he has on top of his head. Jennifer found a lock that she used in the ear. That was great. I'm just looking at the way this goes dark to light and I think it could work right here. This is pretty strong, this dark line on the back. I think that's one of the definitive, definitive lines we can make. And then I think I need something just to really, really shape the bottom of the chin here. I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna use time, I think. A little strip of time. I don't know why, it just needs. Needs definition. That looks better. I'm also going to just hint at the lightness of this back ear right here. Okay, I'm going to work away a little bit on just like the fun little stuff of locks and um, and yarn and I'll probably revisit a few things in the hair and we'll film it and um, you guys can 
um, enjoy enjoy it or uh, disengage and work on your own. <laughs> All right, I've just been tweaking here and there. Um, I'll just point out a couple of things that I did that I'm happy with. Share those. I mixed a little bit of a lighter color to put the highlight in the eye. So I did that. I put a nice like dark definitive line and then light line here and I put a nice really light line here. I think those are important to see and understand what's happening in the ear. Did a little more subtle color changes and blending. Um, I added more locks keeping in mind that I didn't want them all to be at the same height. I tried to vary heights and at some point you're going to have to put some you know, probably some tips down low where the lock actually comes off of the, of the canvas. Otherwise you end up with just a row of, a row of locks. And I did this detail that I think is fun. I've, it's cute. I've put it in all of them. In the picture, it looks almost like the bunny's eating a blade of grass. So to do that, I just cut it and have it go um, just outside of his muzzle on either side, so. Let's see, what else? If you want to do whiskers, I would recommend using a single needle and don't put literal black dots for the whisker spots. It, it'll be too dark, it'll look too contrasting. With a single needle, you should be able to make some dents that look like the base of the whiskers. Uh, I haven't had a ton of success with whiskers. It's almost like we need like a thin piece of thin piece of silk, but the dents look pretty cool. And then you could take a really thin line of Serafina white and twist it in your fingers. It's like super thin. And then whichever end is thicker, I just stab it. Stab it in where you made that dent. You can stab it gently, but if you stab it too much, it starts to kind of wrinkle up and move around. So just a really thin wisp, roll it up, And stab it in. What else? You see anything else? What do you think horse hair would look like as a whisker? Um, it might look good. You might have to sew it. You might have to thread it 
yeah. through because I don't know how you would stick it. Right. Yeah. I feel like this is a little wacky. I'll probably probably fix this. My little locky weird eyeball. Oh, he does have like a little bit of moisture in the corner of his eye. We can get that. Just a tiny bit of white. Yeah. This was fun. It was fun getting all those kind of weird colors in there. I didn't I didn't do that too much in this one. I'll show show the difference. It's funny how different they all are. So, there's that guy. And there's this guy. <laughs> so he's more just brown, you know? So they can be all kinds of ways. What a mess. <laughs> it's a good mess. You have a lot of fiber left. Good mess. Lots of fiber left, definitely. So that went well. It's always a little bit nerve wracking um, creating, creating on camera. <laughs> But I'm I'm happy with it. It's awesome. It is it, it is interesting. You know, I've got three right here that I've made now, and they're all different. And when we made them together, there was eight of us. They were all different, and they were all had their special things in different ways. So yours won't look like mine, which is a good thing. Um, but hopefully, with the supply pack, pulling the materials together, providing um, a groundwork. And some instruction you can have a lot of fun with it and make something that that you're excited about and realize that it's a launch pad for for more for more more projects so post post them on fanfare yes we have a group seraphina felting fanfare and that's where you can share and ask questions and um what else do we need to know we're always putting out um, tutorials and more so lately live streams with our giveaways and felt alongs. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we do something like that. And our Facebook business page is Serafina Fiber Art, which is where we post anything that we want anyone to know. <laughs> and on the website, uh, serafinafiberart.com, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that's another great way to get updates. We do not uh, email very often. We only share when we have some fun news. So lots of, lots of ways to share your creativity and uh, learn from other people as well. So good. It, it, yep. It's, it's you, you really had a good hair day. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I did in some ways. <laughs> So did you, Milo. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much.